Hey everyone, it's Thomas here. So today is the last day of the fundraiser. Now for those of you who don't know, um, I've been making eight videos for the last two weeks in hopes of raising money to help fight the COVID-19 pandemic. Now the money goes directly to Doctors Without Borders and I made these eight videos without sacrificing quality. They take a long time to edit. Each video takes a long time to make. Even a simple video like yesterday, Rust System, took me a whole day to edit like putting pictures from Instagram into the video. But I wanted to do it that way because else it will be not meaningful, right? I have to really push myself, hoping to encourage some of you to participate. And thank you very much. I've reached my target and beyond. So for those of you who are still procrastinating, you have until midnight today to participate if you want. Uh, the link will be in the description as well as the first comment. All right, so let's start today's video. So today's video will be on my system. Now to understand the motivation behind why I chose those gear, you have to understand the reason why I got into stereo. And once again, I apologize for those of you who already know. In short, the story is that I heard my friends very high in system. It affected me big time because it has such a profound effect on me that all my purchasing decision was based on chasing after that system. So after years of experimenting, have I achieved my goal? Have I catch up to his system? Well, 95% of his system with the least money possible. So we're going to answer that question today at the end. So in the goal of trying to keep the video as short as possible, I'm just going to focus on the key points instead. All right, so I'm not going to go into detail with a lot of things because I can spend hours talking about my system. Let's start with just my speakers. Now, I have gone through 70, maybe 80 pairs of speaker at this point. And there are two pairs of speaker that I've decided I'm going to keep for myself that I probably would not sell. But even then, I'm starting to have second thoughts at this point. Anyway, so the first speaker is the Earthquake Titan Tigris. And this speaker has a lot of problems. A lot of problems because it is not a refined speaker. It has no mid-range. Bass is completely out of control. And the sound stage is not focused. So that's my first speaker. The second speaker is the Silverline Sonata. And uh, this is a four-way speaker. I really like this speaker. The only thing I wish it had a bit more was more heavy bass. So the question must be, why are you keeping the Earthquake Titan Tigris? Earthquake, the company built subwoofer. So this speaker is like having four subwoofers on it. The bass is insane on it. And the reason why I kept it, as once again, has something to do with my friend's $300,000 system. It's because if you ever get a chance to experience a full range speaker with incredible powerful bass, it will change you forever. Well, at least in terms of stereo. And that's why I've been trying to look for a speaker that can reproduce the power of that system. And I apologize once again to having to repeat what I said in the past. It comes down to that song Angel again. And that's the best example because that song has no bass, but it is so important that your system is full range to reproduce that grand piano in the very beginning. So I'm going to start the track here for those of you who have never heard it. So as I mentioned in the past, once that piano start playing, you can feel the rumbling in the room. You can feel the weight of the piano, the power of the piano. And out of all the 70 speakers, 80 speakers, and even when I go check in like the stores, there are not many who can reproduce the power of that piano. When I say, uh, I check in the stores, meaning that this is my test track when I go to a store. So the Titan Tigris can do it. It can go down to 25 hertz and it has a lot of power in the bass. And that's all I'm chasing after with the speaker is that ability to go very low. As I mentioned, it is not refined, no mid range, sound stage is narrow. Anyway, but the speaker sounds good if you know what you're doing. And I enjoy that. I enjoy problem solving. For me, there's no bad equipment. It's how good you are at getting the best out of it. So let's take my Titan Tigris, for example. How did I solve the problem with it? So first of all, there's no mid-range. And the reason is because the mid-range on these speakers are very directional. 
Luckily, I have experience with these speakers called Pioneer S3 EX, and that's where I learned you can actually rake forward and backward the speaker. So what I did, I tilt forward the speakers, have the tweeter pointing directly at me. And as a result, the, the mid-range is actually sweet. It, this is a soft dome tweeter. It actually has a very nice mid-range. Next, it's not a refined speaker because the top end is, it has a super tweeter, just like the mid-range. It's actually a super mid-range. I think it's because it can go very low, very high. To solve the tweeter problem, because I love the beryllium, I love the sharpness of Focal, and these speakers don't have it, I use silver cables. So I did everything I can to tilt out the treble as much as I can. And for some people, the tweeter on these are just perfect because it's very smooth. It doesn't have that ringing problem of metal based on tweeter. So there, I raised the level by dealing it with uh, using cables. Next, the, 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 the bass has problem, right? It's really overpowering bass traps. That solved the muddy problem. The, because these speakers, I felt like it's made for a very big room. But after I put bass traps in, and the next thing I did, I closed the port on these speakers with a pair of socks. Sure, it changed the sound, but it tightened up the bass and it controlled more the bass. Finally, I use Class D amps. Class D amps has good damping factor, good control, so I use it to control the bass. And overall, the presentation now is actually pretty okay. Sure, I wish it was a bit more refined, but if you come to my home and if I have to demo you these speakers, I guarantee you'll be very impressed with the bass. Not for everyone, but for me who's chasing after that tremendous bass, I like it. So next I got the Silverline Sonata. Uh, I like it because it's, it's very refined. These speakers, for some reason, they disappear in my room. I don't know, is it because of the way they're designed? The um, driver integration is great. I just like the fact that it's not a fat sounding speaker. So completely opposite from my Titan Tigris, which is a warm and fat sounding speaker. This is actually neutral. The bass, you might think that there's a lot of bass coming from these like 10 inch drivers. I think they're rated to go down also to 25 Hertz. Not at all, not overwhelming bass. And one day, probably I'll make a video on it, but this is one speaker that really caught my attention. So for my class AB amp, I have the Moon W513. So after trying a lot of power amps, I'm not saying that this is the best one, but for the price I paid, it is the ideal one. Because I've brought in what Macintosh, uh, Past Labs, and a, and a whole bunch, Class A, Bryston's, everything, that are more expensive than this, but for the price, I think that the performance is great. And number one, number two, the balance between detail and uh, smoothness for me is just perfect. It's a bit different than the current Moon products. The current Moon products, I find them very analytical, very precise, very detailed. This is somewhere in between. And then my class D is the class C D200. And the reason why I have two different sets is because as I always say, amp it's just an ingredient. It's all a question of matching and pairing. It doesn't matter to me, class Z, class Delta, class Alpha, doesn't matter. All I care about is how to make it sound good. So what I realized, class AB has its strength, class D has its strength, so that's why I have two sets of amps at home. And if you go through the amount of speakers that I go through, you'll quickly realize that some speakers with its bass very difficult to control can benefit more with a class D amp. So there's no one size fit all. So class A, class D, I use it when I have to deal with very difficult uh, to control speakers, such as my Earthquake Titan Tigris. When, I come, when it comes to the silver line speaker, the class AB sounds better, as well as tubes. It's just the way it is. So next, we move on to my preamp. My main tube preamp is the Modrite LS100 because I find the sound uh, really warm, rich, and it's a more softer, fat sounding preamp compared to my Shit Freya. Shit Freya, I chose it because it's the other extreme. It sounds more leaner because everything is relative, right? It sounds a bit quicker. So depending on the speaker, I have two different sets of preamp. And for solid state, I kept my Bermesta. Bermesta shocked me in the sense that it has a deep sound stage. So out of all the solid state preamp, the Bermesta was the one that really caught my attention. It's not an analytical preamp, but it has enough detail, but yet very musical at the same time. Finally, I'm gonna move on to the DAC. My DAC is the Exosound E28. 
And for me, the key when it comes to a deck is analog sounding. This deck, it has that softness to it. It has that punch to the bass, but it's not tight bass. So that's why I also have, to, I bought the Denifrib Eris 2 to, for the other extreme. Den Denifrib Eris 2 is more tilted up on the top end. The bass is leaner, it's tighter. So I have two extremes. Why? Because it depends on the speaker. For me, I always say gear is just an ingredient. Depends on how you mix and match it. There's no such thing as what is the best DAC. So if you sit back and look at my system, you'll notice that it's separated into two categories. One is the warmer, fatter side, richer, which is the Mott Wright, the Moon, and the Exa sound. And the other side is more the leaner sound, the quicker sound, such as the Class A, the Eris 2, as well as the Shit Freya. So depending on the speaker, this is how I match my gear. So finally, I have this tube integrated amp, the Cayenne CS55A. It might be my final integrated tube amp because of price versus performance reason. One day, uh, I might make a video on it. So if you notice, I have Class D, Class AB, and tubes, right? Uh, the tube, I'm still working on it. And for me, there's no such thing as which one is the best. Is Class AB better than Class D than, class, than tubes? For me, it's just a question of taste. That's all it is. Because for me, this is Chinese food, French food, and Italian food. So which food is the best? Sure, you have a preference for it, but please don't tell me that Italian food is better than Chinese food. There are have like 1.5 billion people challenging you on that. And because I'm super greedy, I want to try all kinds of food. So that's why I have three systems at home. All right, so let's answer the question now. Did my system achieve 95% of my friend's system? The answer is no, it has not. And I think that has to do with my character. Let me explain. Because the point of diminishing return is different for everyone. I brought my brother to go listen to that system. You know what he said? Fantastic bass, incredible bass. I brought my wife to listen to that system. Great cl clarity, that's what she said. Amazing clarity. She won't pay $300,000 for it, but she said very good clarity. Brought my nephew over, he said, wow, the instrument separation is incredible on that system. So. Three people, three different answer. The problem with me is that I see all those three different things plus a dozen more. So when I compare to my own system, I'm not just comparing one thing to my system, I'm comparing a whole bunch of things to my system. For example, let's take the Titan Tigris. It has the base weight power of that system, but it doesn't have the speed definition when it comes to base of that system. So. Is it 95% of that system? Not even close. Doesn't have the refinement of that system. Doesn't have the precision of that system. Just have one thing of that system. But because what I'm chasing after is very specific, I know what I'm looking for. I know, therefore, the big gap between what I'm trying to build and what I'm trying to achieve. So uh, for that reason, I gave up. I gave up on it and I told myself, my only solution is to build multiple systems. Each system has a strength. And when I want to listen to that kind of music, I will take out that system. So for example, let's take a look at, at the speaker I have right now, the Rogers LS9 slash five. I would say when it comes to guitar, this speaker can rival my friend's system, if not better. I probably give the edge to the Rogers. So if you're somebody who likes guitar, then that high-end system means nothing to you. This speaker, the Rogers, is what you're looking for. Yeah, I'm sorry if uh, my conclusion is not what everyone wants to hear. And I understand because a lot of us would like to hear that story where my you know $1,000 amp can rival this $50,000 amp. And I probably get more subscribers if I say things like that. But I guess it comes down to a question of uh, the point of diminishing return is different for everyone. Right? If all you care about is the bass punch, yeah, maybe that $1,000 amp will be better than the $50,000 amp. But if you want bass punch plus definition plus bass separation, then maybe not. And that's one thing I learned. The reason why the gap between my system and my friend's system got bigger and bigger as I upgrade my system is not because of the system, but rather my growth as an audiophile my ability to hear a bit more, to understand what to look for in a system grew. 
As a result, that's where I start to appreciate more of what that high-end system can do that my own system cannot do. And for that reason, I gave up at one point and I just focus on building a system that's pleasant to my ears instead of chasing that impossible dream. So right now, I do have a system that I'm very happy with and uh, I have a lot of enjoyment listening to it. All I need is just more time. I need more time. So with that said, I'll see you guys next time. Set on her prey like stars in the darkest night crystal